hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Between Bells here on Chatter with Nora Lee. I'm Baker Machado, and tomorrow night, guys, the top prospects in basketball from around the NCAA and around the world are going to gather at the Barclays Center here in New York for the NBA draft. But one name that's on everybody's mind is still hmm, that LeBron James. Where is he going to be playing next? So where is, what does the draft teach us about with free agency looming and what the teams are going to be doing? Well, answer all that and so much more. So our friend James Yoder, founder and CEO over at Chat Sports. Great to see you as always, James. Uh, so let's start at the top of the NBA draft. The Phoenix Suns have the number one pick in the draft, and a lot of people are expecting them to take their hometown hero, uh, DeAndre uh, Ayton, over from University of Arizona. He apparently was already signing autographs on Phoenix Suns jerseys. So now is this a sure thing, then, that he essentially is going to be picked number one? You got to think that he's going to be number one. One massively dominant freshman season, over 20 points, over 11 rebounds a game. The Suns' ownership are Arizona donors, alums, and that's going to play a big part. I kind of relate this a little bit to, uh, you know, Derrick Rose to the Bulls, although he didn't go to school there. He's from Chicago. It makes it a seamless transition. LeBron to the Cavs back in 2003. It's going to be, be very tough to see them taking anyone else because he's a hometown guy, went to the University of Arizona, uh, had kind of a, a, a weird end to his season with them losing in the first round of the, of the NCAA tournament. But I think that's your guy. I would be shocked if it was anyone else outside of a trade, which of course could happen that, uh, that we saw last year. But I think this is your man, DeAndre Ayton. All right, let's talk about the Slovenian team, mm. Luka Doncic as yep. well. Uh, been called one of the most accomplished rookie prospects to ever yep. enter the draft. He could go as low as fifth, though. By Our the way, didn't the Suns hire like his coach or somebody close and associated to him? Yeah, I mean, so he is a prospect, you said, one of the most accomplished. Look, he was the MVP of the EuroLeague, and he was a 19-year-old two years ago. They played against the Thunder, the team he was on two summers ago, came over and played the Thunder in a scrimmage, and he was, you know, a serviceable. He played at a high level when he was 17 against NBA players. So I think there was a little bit of, you know, Euro fatigue sometimes with taking these guys uh, at the top picks because so many of them have not li lived up to expectations. I mean, you go back to, uh, to Dirk and Pau Gasol, those guys did live up to expectations, but a lot haven't from uh, the EuroLeague. So there's a little bit of that fatigue, not wanting to make, uh, you know, jump too high, not sure what level of competition he's played against. But I actually think that he's going to be a, a high-level NBA player. Uh, if he drops as low as five, I think the teams that draft, uh, you know, two, three, four will end up regretting it. Uh, and, of course, like the NFL draft, you can trade your picks in the first round as well, unlike the Major League Baseball draft, which is wah, wah. Um, So let's, what trades are you expecting might happen in the first round? Anybody going to move up? Well, I think the one to keep an eye on is the Cleveland Cavs at pick number eight. So this is a pick they got, you know, via the New, uh, the New Jersey, the Brooklyn Nets uh, with the Kyrie and Isaiah Thomas trade. If they go after uh, a point guard or, if, you know, that, that might signal – they're, they're drafting the future. It also could signal that maybe LeBron uh, wants a point guard playmaker. But if they trade the pick to try and get a Kawhi Leonard or another uh, you know, B or all-star level player, then I think that could signal that maybe they have some information about LeBron James's intentions. Maybe LeBron said, like, I don't want to play with a rookie, package this deal and other players or future picks uh, for a top level guy. Maybe a guy who was on the trade block, you know, most notably uh, Kawhi Leonard or somebody else. I think uh, the NBA draft is, is always one that's going to bring us surprises. So uh, we were just talking about in our production meeting for our NBA draft show tomorrow that, you know, there could be a dozen or more trades in the first and second round. Uh, the Warriors will be a team that wants to trade and buy a pick in the second round. So I think it's just going to be uh, much like we've seen the NFL the last two years it's just going to be chaos the first uh, the first round you're going to see a lot of teams move around keep an eye out for the Celtics they may be one that, uh, that they want to kind of move around uh, up or down they've got a lot of future picks that they can uh, they can leverage to to get a player or maybe even move into this year's draft a little higher yeah James you mentioned Kawhi Leonard's name just a moment ago and of course that's one of the besides LeBron James that's the other big star that everybody wants to find out where he's going there was a report within the last week or so from ESPN saying that he he was going to maybe leave to go to Los Angeles or somewhere else. But now there's a report that his coach, Greg Popovich of the Spurs, met with him in San Diego. So what are we getting into the mindset of Kawhi's head where he wants to go now? You know, it's a little bit of a broken relationship, right? He barely played this season. The team said that they thought he could play. 
he still wants second medical opinions. And then he simultaneously released, you know, whether it's through uh, an uncle we've heard about or someone else to multiple media sources last Friday that he wants a trade. And of course, that set uh, you know, NBA Twitter and, and the NBA Internet on fire. Where could he go? What does the future look like? Is this going to be a package deal for LeBron? Uh, I think it would be tough to see him coming back. Almost never do you see a player demand a trade. Really, the only one I could think of is Kobe Bryant back in like 2006 or seven, whatever that was. He demanded a trade, and then the next year they got Pau Gasol, so they ended up winning uh, titles or going to the NBA Finals at least. Uh, rarely do you see players demand trades, and the relationship is uh, is you know, reconciled. So the Lakers are certainly the most likely choice from uh, building a super team with LeBron and Paul George. They'd have to do that before uh, June 30th. If they do it after June 30th, they'd unlikely be able to sign all three of those guys, have to have Kawhi under contract prior to that. Then they can sign two free agents. But there was initially some reports that the Spurs would be unlikely to trade him to the Western Conference. They want to ship him out east. So the Celtics, maybe even the Cleveland Cavs to get him package some players or trade uh, draft picks and use that to lure LeBron. The only risk there, of course, is they package those players. LeBron doesn't come. There's no way Kawhi stays. So they basically mortgage the future for one year of Kawhi Leonard. So I think it's unlikely that uh, he, he ends up in, you know, stays in with the Spurs next year. I think the Lakers have got to be the number one option. And then potentially Cavs, potentially Celtics, mostly the Celtics, because they have just banked so many future draft picks uh, that they can, you know, basically write uh, the Spurs a future with giving them multiple first rounders in exchange for Kawhi and the young players they have on the roster. James, you mentioned the possibility of Kawhi Leonard and LeBron James being together. What do you see as the likelihood of them actually ending up as teammates? No, not the Lakers. Well, I mean, like I said, it's got to happen before June 30th, or it's unlikely the Lakers would be able to do anything to get all three guys under the cap. If they've got him on, you know, uh, under contract, uh, Kawhi does, they still have the option to sign two players like Paul George and LeBron James. The only way this happens with those guys playing, I think it's two teams. It's the Lakers to form the new big three, a big three that I think could realistically, if they kept a guy like uh, Kyle Kuzma or Alonzo Ball, they have you know a fourth serviceable player that they could realistically compete with the Warriors, although I think the Warriors would still beat that team. Um, or it's in Cleveland. If LeBron says, look, I don't want to move around again. My kids, my son's getting close to high school. I want to keep my family stable. I'm going to stay in Cleveland that somehow the Cavs got Kawhi Leonard to come to Cleveland and had a gentleman's agreement that, uh, that you know, he would uh, sign after next summer when he'd be a free agent no matter what. So keep an eye out for those uh, two moves. I think those are the most likely to be paired with LeBron. Uh, the, the, the crazy wild chance would be some reason that both guys would want to go to the Celtics with Kyrie Irving being there. I don't see. But the Celtics is just a team that are positioned for the future. They've got a great core. They've got young players. They've got two stars coming back uh, that were injured this past year's playoffs. And they've just got a boatload of first round picks in the futures. They've just, you know, uh, mastered the art of trading away uh, older players and getting younger. And so that could be enticing to a guy like LeBron, Kawhi. But Keep right. out for Lakers, maybe Cavs. Uh, James, less than 20 seconds. What's your craziest prediction for the offseason? Well, I think it's good that uh, LeBron's going to go to L.A. and form some sort of new super team to take on the Warriors. I think he's going to leave Cleveland again. I think he's going to do it quietly again. All right, that's not that crazy. It could happen. I don't see him signing. I mean, it would be crazy because the Houston Rockets, that would be crazy. James Yoder, founder yeah. and CEO over at Chat Sports. Always a pleasure, James. Good to see you.